Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sake Revolution. This is America's first sake podcast. I'm your host, John Puma from the Sake Notes. I'm also the administrator over at the Internet Sake Discord and Reddit's r slash sake community. And I'm your host, Timothy Sullivan. I'm a sake samurai, sake educator, as well as the founder of the Urban Sake website. And every week, John and I will be here tasting and chatting about all things sake and doing our best to make it fun and easy to understand. Tim. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy, happy New Year. Welcome uh, to is... 2024. It's it's amazing <laughs> year so far, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's a lot like 2023, to be honest. Uh, but, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, we are here. We're, uh, we're in our first episode of 2024. That's exciting. Uh, Very. And I think... Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a tradition around here that uh, at the start of every year, we kind of go over the previous year. We talk about, um, you know, some things about the show. Uh, we talk about our prior year's uh, sake revolution resolutions. And we talk about what we're going to do for the, for this year for our little resolutions. Uh, so, so Tim, uh, how... Uh, not 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 diving right into that kind of thing yet because I think there's an I think there's something else we can do a little bit differently today. And I think that is we can start with our kampai because Let's do that. it is the new year. Yes. New year, new ideas. Probably just for this episode, but you know, still fun. <laughs> and even though we're talking about we're using the word new an awful lot, uh, the sake we're going to be tasting today is an old friend, an old standby uh, yes. for us on the show here. We've had uh, this particular sake on the show several times, and it's a, one of our local favorites. Uh, Tim, what do we have today? Today we're going to be tasting the Brooklyn Kura Blue Door Junmai Nama. Mm, yes, yes. Uh, I'm a big fan, and I, I think I might have mentioned this the last time we had it on the show, but as the years have gone on, because uh, Brooklyn Kura has two flagships, they got their number 14 and their Blue Door, and I was always a number 14 guy. And I think over the past couple of years, I've, I've gradually become more of a blue door guy. Oh, wow. I don't know if that's, I don't know if the sake has been changing or if I've been changing, but it's been a lot of fun to, to be on the journey. Well, the blue door is definitely Brooklyn Kura's flagship sake. And the name blue door, as we've, as we've mentioned before on past episodes, comes from the original tap room had a door that mm -hmm. was painted blue. Now that I'm out at Brooklyn Kura more often, I can tell you that that original door is now black. <laughs> <laughs> so but, is, this, is, this, is the black door coming? Is, is it a hint? <laughs> it's an Easter egg? <laughs> I think the blue door brand is going to stay the blue door brand mm -hmm. for Brooklyn Kura just because it's so iconic. Mm -hmm. uh, and the new tap room is all glass windows. So there's no blue door anymore. <sighs> Uh, no it, is, blue door? it is the blue door of legend and myth, but <laughs> <laughs> legend and myth. I love but it. The, the sake is as delicious as ever. So ah. I think for our listeners who may not have heard us taste this before, uh, let me run down the stats real quick. Mm -hmm. So we have a 17% alcohol. This is a June, my grade. It's also a Nama unpasteurized mm. sake. The SMV sake meter value is a plus three. And they use two American-grown rices to make this sake, Yamada Nishiki and Calrose. Those are milled to 70% and 60% respectively. Mm. So as you said, this is an old dear friend that we've tasted a few times on the show. And yeah. uh, I'm excited to get some in the glass. So let's pour it. Yeah. I, I have to say, now that I know that the the blue door is no longer a blue door... It's nice that we we're having this to kind of send off the literal blue door in a way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll come by to the blue door. All right. Yes. All right. So we have our Brooklyn Kura blue door in the glass. This has a hint of yellow color um, mm -hmm. from being a Nama and... And it's not charcoal filtered, if I'm not mistaken. That's right? correct. Yeah, I think right. that's correct. All right, let's smell this. Hmm. So I mm. love the mixture of riciness and fruitiness on this sake. Yeah. That's that is a a fun thing about it, and it's a riciness, and the, the fruitiness is a little to me, a little on the jammier side. Mm -hmm. 
like just a touch. It goes famously with the rice. All right. Well, John, we mm. promised to come pie in the beginning. Oh my so goodness. here's to doing? 2023 and welcoming 2024. Come pie. Come pie. Mm. Mm. It does have a little bit of that jammy characteristic. You're right. Yeah. I, I think that when I, it's like on, on the aroma, the aroma informs my brain is, Oh, the jammy style like that, that it's like, because it's a little bit of more of a tart fruit on the nose. My, my brain kind of translates that into, well, here comes the jammy, the jammy stuff. The thing I like about this particular sake from Brooklyn Kura is that it is the most rice forward of their standard lineup. And it has just a hint of riciness to it, a little bit more structure and body than their fruitier styles. Right. And it's really food friendly. And it's so nice to have a nama sake with a bit more heft to it that we can enjoy with food produced locally for us here in New York. So it's a winner all around in my book. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, that I've always been a big fan of this one. Uh, and I've become a bigger fan as time's gone, as time has gone on. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if, if the sake has matured because one thing that, you know, when you experience uh, a local brewery from like when they get started and, and, you know, until three years out, or, I'm sorry, until f- uh, five or six years out, things change. It's, 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 a, it's the nature of, of, of craft brewing. And so seeing how it's changed and, and, and again, also my own, um, my own personal tastes have probably changed as well. And it's been, been a lot of fun to see how the sake has grown and grown on me over the years. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a really wonderful sake and I think a wonderful way to kick off the year for us returning to an old friend. <laughs> yes. An old friend whose, whose namesake is now, is now departed. But isn't, isn't that a good lesson for moving forward in life? Like nothing ever stays the same. <laughs> Change is the only constant. <laughs> Change is the only constant. And yeah, you have to welcome the new and honor those things that have uh, passed on. And I think it's a, a good metaphor for the start of the year. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so uh, you're mentioning this is a good metaphor for starting the new year, but let's talk a little bit about the previous year first before yeah. we go too far. Should um, we should we flash back to our revolution <laughs> resolutions for 2023? Let's. Do you remember <laughs> what you resolved? Um, so I actually didn't, so I went and looked it up. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's cheating. I realize, but Hey, you know, um, that what are, you know, if, if you have resources, you don't utilize them. Like, what's the point? Uh, so at sake revolution.com, I went back and looked and I saw that published on January the 7th, 2023 episode number 133. Uh, it's called wild rice. Akamai. We talk about red rice on that episode. It's uh, the, it's a uh, funky rice, funky sake stuff. It's really interesting stuff. That should have been an extreme in addition to being wild rice. But we did talk about our uh, resolutions because I think the previous week we we went over the we went over our 2022 resolutions and then we went oh wait we haven't actually thought of what we <laughs> want to do for 2023 yet we're just gonna and we punted to the next week and then there we are and so you went with the the very structured and attainable goal of going to Japan. Hmm. And, and I think we've talked about how that went. <laughs> yep. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Timothy had not been to Japan since 2019. So yes. his goal was to get over there. And then you did it three times. Yes. I overcompensated. <laughs> <laughs> you made up for lost time. Now, now these weren't all, um, these weren't all leisure trips. I think only one of them was really, uh, yes for yourself, but the other ones were business trips. Hey, they still count though. You get a little, you get a little time there. I imagine even when you're working, but, but yeah, you put your, you put your heart into it. You made it happen. Now I went with a vague sort of resolution. I wanted to just think more about pairing and be more aware of pairings with food when I'm having my sake. That's very wishy-washy Tim. And I wish I would have come up with something better. On the plus side, though, I do think I was more cognizant of that sort of thing when I'm sipping and when I'm eating. Um, I think I had made some notes about pairing along the way over the year. But 
it wasn't the concrete quantifiable goal that yours was. So I commend you for mm-hmm. coming up with something very direct <laughs> and we're going to talk about how I'm going to, tr- how I'm going to fix that for next year in my mind. <laughs> but, so do you, uh, do you yeah. feel like you achieved your goal of doing more sake and food pairing? Cause we, we talk about pairing almost in every episode we do. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we've talked about it a lot. Yeah. And I feel like I dipped my toe into it more than I had ever done before. It was something I was more aware of, but it's, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to, to say like, oh yeah, I definitely completed that goal when it's something so vague and pardon the term wishy-washy perhaps, Mm. you know, I feel like I I wish I would have done something a little bit more quantifiable, a little more solid, a little more direct, but you know, that that's, it's good to learn from these experiences and, and then, you know, take the, take that knowledge into the next year. That's a good lesson for this year. It is in fact a really good lesson for this year. So, um, now, speaking about 2024, Timmy, uh, what are you doing? What yes. do you want to accomplish this year? What's your sake revolution resolution? Well, my revolution resolution for 2024, and I'm going to need your help with this one, John. Oh, my. My resolution is to do some live shows of sake revolution. Oh, well, sir, we've already done that in 2023. So, congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understand. What this you're is saying. for uh, <laughs> this is for a new idea. I would love for us to do some live shows in 2024, have an audience and interaction. And we did something, as you mentioned last year, at the American Craft Sake Festival, mm-hmm. and that was outdoors in less than ideal conditions and boiling <laughs> hot. <laughs> But and we still did a great job. We still, I thought, well, we I did don't a good job. To my it, own horn, but I feel like those were good episodes. <laughs> it it gave me a taste of something we could do a little bit more, and I I love it when you and I are just on the Zoom studio and chit chatting. But it was so interesting to have the live reactions from an audience, and I'd love to find an occasion or a time to do that again in 2024. So that's my revolution resolution. Hmm. All right. I like it. I like it. Um, and you're right. I guess I am a big part of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. I need your help, Puma. <laughs> so if you don't succeed, it's my fault. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> and how um, about you, John? What is on tap for you for your resolution? So uh, I want to have something quantifiable. I want to have something that I can measure. I want to have something that I can, uh, you know, set out to do and accomplish. And I in many things in, in my life, I'm less uh, inclined to formal education. I am more, um, I am more somebody who, who learns by doing, by by hands on, a little hard knocks education, I guess. Um, but I think that when you do that, there are holes in your knowledge, mm. and so I want to plug some of those holes in my knowledge. And I, for this year, want to do some formal sake education. Ooh. Yeah. I haven't decided exactly what it's going to be yet. Doors are open to hmm. uh, two ideas. Um, but I'm going to do some sort of a formal um, sake education course uh, this year, preferably something that has some kind of a test at the end so we can see if I actually learned something. Oh, wow. That would be fun. And then uh, I'll come back and report about it on the show and see how it went. That's well, I, I do know a very well-regarded sake educator. <laughs> <laughs> do you? <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I, I, we can't have any. Um, we can't have any any bias from the teacher. No, you know? gotta, no, no. You know, no. This has to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you seek education elsewhere, JP, and you want to mm-hmm. do a class with another teacher, I hold no. Um, what's the word? Grudge. <laughs> you hold no grudge. Okay. No yeah. grudge. You can seek education anywhere, and I would be absolutely delighted. But if you want to join one of my classes, that would be great, too. We shall see. We shall see. (laughs) Maybe I will. You know, Brooklyn Curry is conveniently located in New York City. (laughs) (laughs) Well, good. I'm I'm excited about this, and I really – I want to see how it goes. I am I am a bad student. I have to tell you that mm. right now, right off the bat. In in those in educational situations, I am a poor poor study. 
I, I, I learn by getting my hands on things. I learn by doing. Hmm. Uh, so it's gonna be really interesting to have to learn by by listening and and see if maybe perhaps in my in my old age, I've um, uh, I've learned a few new tricks. We'll see. <laughs> well, so so the the resolution is to take at least one sake education class with a test. Right. Yeah. Right? Some or earn some sort of a perhaps certification or something like that. All right. Yeah. I like that. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure out the details and and we'll we'll keep the the um, sake revolution universe appraised of my progress <laughs> and uh, see how it goes. I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm a little nervous because now it's yeah. like I have um our uh, you know I've we have all of our listeners that I'm now being held accountable to. So um, now that's out there, I've got to do it right. So yeah, this time next year could be a little awkward if you don't. <laughs> it could, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so another thing that now that we've kind of talked about what what we said we were going to set out to do last year and what we're going to try and set out to do this year, I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk a little bit about how Sake Revolution went for us last year as a show because uh, we do have mm. um, we do have got some stats. Our so our host goes and sends us. Uh, I, I want to blame Spotify for this. Uh, one of those like, ra- like a, kind of the idea of like Spotify wrapped, but they do it for your podcast when they're mm. when you're hosted on their platform. And it kind of like, they call it the podcasting recap. Uh, and it has a couple of really interesting tidbits in here. Tim, what's your what's your favorite on here? Well, they let us know what are the most popular cities for yep. downloading and listening to our podcast. Mm-hmm. And surprise, surprise, Brooklyn and New York are in the very, very top. And then we also have a lot of listeners in Tokyo, Japan, Mm -hmm. which is not so surprising. Mm -hmm. But kind of our number three listing is Seattle, Washington. So shout out to Seattle. (laughs) Yeah. You know, up and coming sake city, I think. Uh, I was in Seattle earlier this year. Uh, There was some really great places that had really good sake. So I I can can see that happening. It's a blossoming sake city, perhaps. (laughs) Well... I'm proud of Seattle for all the sake lovers there yeah. downloading Sake Revolution. Thank you so much. They also gave us a, a listing of our top episodes. Oh, so yeah. you know, by, top episodes by download for the year. Yeah. Um, and so the number one, uh, a little bit of a surprise, back to school, uh, sake courses and certifications, which maybe I should go back and re-listen to <laughs> going into uh, going into my uh, resolution. This says to me that people are kind of looking at our show and being like, oh, where can I further my uh my sake education and yeah and yeah. referring to it yeah i think there's there's a real pardon the pun but there's a real thirst for knowledge here and, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and oh, i damn. think that uh, that that <laughs> episode idea was a really good one because when i go out to do events in person people ask me quite often oh where can i get a certification where can i take a class so i thought that might be a popular episode but i'm surprised to see it come out as the number one most popular episode from last mm-hmm. year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number two was um, Rice Advice, which was the when we had uh, Brandon Dawn from Brooklyn Kerr on the show talking about uh, about sake rice. And what we did with that episode was we had two sakes that were more or less identical, except for the uh, rice that was used. Uh, I believe he was like trying to recreate blue door but using a new rice and so that, that was actually the probably the last time we had blue door on the show yeah. and it was a really interesting chat about just like how much of a difference rice makes in sake like we all know that rice is a huge is a huge component of sake it drives a lot of the flavor uh it drives the texture all these things but it was really interesting to just like experience it in person and talk to the person that mm. made it that was a lot of fun Number three was exploring sake labels. That, is a, that was a fun episode, Tim. I really enjoyed doing that one. Yeah, that was fun. But I have to be honest, when we were making it and recording it, I thought, how is this going to translate for people <laughs> who are just listening to us talk about describing the way a label looks? Uh-huh. But we made a point to put it all in the show notes. So I hope people went to the website, looked at the show notes and listened along and got a sense of all the visuals. But uh, yeah, I think Sake Labels was a popular episode. I'm so glad to yeah. see it at spot number three. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next one after that was the Sake Spotlight of Shiga Prefecture. Wow, that's a dark horse. Yeah, that surprised me a lot. That was a dark, <laughs> very much a dark horse uh, episode. 
Uh, that really, really, I was like, mm, okay. Do you know what I think was driving the popularity of that episode? Oh, uh, please tell me. We talked about the most disgusting food <laughs> I've ever eaten in Japan. <laughs> That was pretty graphic content. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It definitely was. It definitely was. <laughs> I forgot about that. I have a trauma. Yes. I blocked it out. <laughs> and then rounding it out, number five was the U.S. Sake Brewer Series. That when we had Todd Bellamy on from uh, Farthest Star Sake. Todd yes. is a friend of the show who's he's been on a few times now, I think. But this was, I think, the first time we had him on. And we talked a little about his new brewery and sipped some of his, uh, some of his very good sake. So that was a fun one. I'm glad we got to have him on. I, I can't wait to have him on again. So yeah, that rounds out. That was our top five. I, surprises. I want to tell you, I was surprised at these results. I thought it was going to be mm. a little bit different. There are a couple that I'm, I'm not surprised to see on the list, but I, where they were surprised me a little bit. And then Shiga, that's just such a surprise. It's just, uh, you know, it's just we, we were having a fun time making that episode and it just shows up that people would really enjoyed it. That's nice. Yeah. So John, that is the view from what our listeners downloaded, but right. I have to ask you, Uh oh, do you have any favorite memory or favorite episode from 2023 yourself? Hmm. All right. So this is cheating a little bit, but being uh, live on stage at the uh, American Craft Sake Festival, that was my favorite memory of hmm. the of the year for the show. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, I had so much fun doing it. And, you know, honestly, it's made me open to doing live shows uh, again going forward in, in 2024. So hopefully I can help you make your 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 resolution come true. <laughs> but yeah, like that, that for me, was such a great experience, minus the heat. But what are you going to do? Um, like It was just such a great time. Yeah, it was a great time. However, my thought on that experience, I really enjoyed it, too. Mm -hmm. But I really felt like it was our first time doing anything live and in front of an audience and we were there for the whole day and getting up on the stage and we really didn't know if we could get our audio equipment to like <laughs> hook up. <laughs> yes. There was, there was an awful lot of, um, uh, last minute, know, last, maybe not last minute, but there was an awful lot of where we think this is going to work. Let's cross our fingers. Let's say that. I think there yes. was definitely, mm, that was definitely a, a factor. But the flip side of that is it was an amazing learning experience, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And I think that future experiences of this nature uh, are going to be a little smoother, a little bit less yeah. uh, fraught. <laughs> Uh, and it wasn't on anybody else. It was, you know, it's just when you're doing something for the first time, Oh my God. You, you learn all the hiccups, you learn where the holes are and you're, like, Oh wait, we didn't think about that. And then here we are. Now we know. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you, ha you, until you do it, you don't know what you need to ask or what you need to prepare mm -hmm. or what type of setups might await you in different recording locations. Yep. So it was a really good learning experience. And you know, I'm proud of us for like just going for it. Like we could have said, oh, we don't know how it's going to work. Let's maybe next year or whatever. But no, we went for it and <laughs> we learned the lessons we needed to learn and we got some really good content out of it. So yeah, for me, that was a really good memory as well and definitely a highlight for last year. All right. All right. But now that that was, you know, a highlight. But what's he, what is your, your, what is your full highlight? What is the, What was your favorite moment? Oh, well, this, there's no question in my mind. Oh, but my favorite okay. memory from 2023 was, and that was putting John Puma in a sake kasu mask in our <laughs> cosmetics episode. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that didn't make my list. <laughs> <laughs> but you do admit your so skin slimy. felt soft and supple after that episode. <laughs> Fine. Yes, it did. <laughs> And if any so listeners, did my beard, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> if any listeners uh, need a jump scare warning before they look at the show notes, <laughs> please be warned. Oh my goodness! That there's a photo of us with our sake kasu masks on. But uh, I thought that episode was really fun, and I don't know a lot about sake cosmetics, obviously, but I think it was fun to try it out. <laughs> and give it the old whirl while drinking yeah. sake. 
I, I have to tell you, uh, I didn't know a lot about Safi Cosmetics going into that episode. I think after the episode, I know less about <laughs> Safi Cosmetics than I did before. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> uh, but it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun. And w- yeah, there's a lot of, so here's the thing. When, when we do an episode and I'm like doing the editing and, and we are laughing constantly, <laughs> I'm like, all right, this is. This is going to be a good one, and, so, and that was that episode was just constant hilarity. We just could not stop, could not stop laughing at, at how ridiculous it was with this thing on my head. Well, uh, I do have to say, you were you were a good sport about the whole thing, and uh, I think it came out pretty well. So that was episode one forty eight. If anyone wants to go back and listen to our sake skincare episode, uh, yeah. So that was that was. You know, honestly, it was a a highlight for me because we had so much fun recording that episode. Yeah, and and for reference, uh, my episode of the Sake Brewers Roundtable live at the American Craft Sake Festival that was um, episode one fifty two. So yeah, we had a good time with that. One thing that, that didn't make either of our lists, but we should mention because it was a lot of fun. Also, is we did a live stream for the first time. Yes, we sure did. Yeah, we did. We did a two hour live stream on Sake Day on October 1st with listeners over at our YouTube channel. And in the near future, we're actually going to be publishing that uh, episode on YouTube. So you can see, so people who were not there could, can listen in and see it. And we're also going to have it on the Sake Revolution uh podcast listing as well so you'll be able to listen to it there are a couple of site gags here and there but um you know you can always look at it on on youtube if you want uh we uh because it was two hours long we had a good time we we drank some really good sake we had a lot of really fun guests and it was it was a great time yes and that was another just like the the (laughs) american craft sake festival being live in front of an audience that was like flying by the seat of our pants yes as well (laughs) Getting the yeah. live streaming on YouTube to work. Yeah. And I have to say, like, I, I <laughs> talking about how we learned all these things at the festival and like the, the wonder about how it's going to work, if it's going to go the way we plan, reminded me of the, <laughs> of the live stream. I was like, oh, yeah, there was that. And that was that was a little crazy. Uh, but it went well. And, and uh, we had a really fun time doing that. Yeah. And. The thing that I'm most proud about is that we even try it. You know, when you and I first started recording podcasts back in 2020, we didn't know what the heck we were doing. And you just learn over time. You just have to throw yourself out there, not be worried about making a mistake and learn as you go. Uh, And that's something I'm proud of from 2023 is that we did take these chances to try something new, try a new medium. And it's been really good. And I think it'll get better this year. We'll probably try both of those things again and see how it goes. Uh, absolutely. I'll be disappointed if we don't try both of those things again. Because <laughs> okay. I had a fun time doing both of them. Yeah. Um, now, I know, John, my resolution for last year was to go to Japan. You got big yes. travel plans for Japan this year? <laughs> yes, uh, um, I do. Uh, so I will be... Uh, I, we talked about this a little bit on a previous episode, but I have already booked for uh 2024 um and i made what many people would consider a critical error <laughs> i booked everything because we had a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on um here in our in our lives so we had we had to book around a lot of like you know of our our you know, life stuff here um in the u.s uh and i found the time to to book it and i went ahead and i did it and we were all set. And then I learned that it's Golden Week, and you're not supposed to you're not supposed to go to Japan on Golden Week. <laughs> <laughs> For our listeners who may not be familiar, John, what is Golden Week? Golden Week is a set of several holidays that take mm. place over one week during the end of April, typically the last week in April, and the whole country pretty much shuts down. Um, yep. Now, from what I understand, it's primarily the big cities that shut down and kind of the small towns maybe uh, maybe bounce up a little bit because you have people visiting from the big cities. But, yeah, I don't know. I've never done it. The um, the popular wisdom is always never to do that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to experience it. Uh, it's definitely going to be a unique trip. 
<laughs> yep. I think my advice would be just to reserve trains in advance. Golden week mm -hmm. tends to be very booked up for hotels and trains. So mm -hmm. if you get those things squared away, you may have some more crowds more than usual, but you can really enjoy yourself and enjoy Japan. I uh, plan to. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, it's just a matter of <laughs> being aware of those things. Because, yeah, we're, our flights are booked. Our um, hotels are all booked. We're, we're good to go. Awesome. Yeah. Um, are you going back yourself? I'll oh. Leave that. Yeah. I, right now, I don't have any concrete plans booked, mm -hmm. but I would be extremely surprised if I don't go to Japan maybe one or two times in 2024. So mm -hmm. it's high Excellent. on my agenda, mm -hmm. but nothing concrete booked at the moment. So we'll have oh. to see how things shake out. We had Excellent. so much fun on our last trip to Japan and... I just can't wait to go again. Great. Well, Tim, it has been a delight sitting here and uh, reminiscing about the past year and and kind of setting the stage for next year with you. Yes, we had our ups. We had our downs. <laughs> yes, we did. We had our roundabouts, and it was all a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, John, it was so great to taste with you today and revisit our dear friend, Blue Door, R.I.P., Pour one out for the blue door. <laughs> <laughs> the and sake lives on, but the door is gone. <laughs> the door is gone, but the sake and the brand lives on. Yes. Uh, it was so great to taste some blue door. Nice to chat with you and reminisce. And I'm really looking forward to see how our revolution resolutions shake out for 2024. I also want to say a special thank you to our listeners. Thank you so much for checking in again today. And we're so happy you joined us. A special hello and thank you to our patrons as well. Saki Revolution would not be possible without their very generous support. If you'd like to learn more about supporting Sake Revolution, please visit patreon.com slash sake revolution to learn more. And we mentioned a lot of previous episodes on today's show. You might want to go over to sakerevolution.com and take a look at them. We've got some show notes for every single episode and a written transcript in case you just kind of, you don't feel like listening to something you just want to read through. You can do that. We even have a little swag shop at the site. You can buy t-shirts and stickers, all that kind of stuff. Go ahead and take a look there and uh, let us know what you think of the site. I like it personally. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to grab a glass of Blue Door. Remember to keep drinking sake and come by.